Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So my mom just bought some new hot peppers, and she's gonna make some more hot pepper sauce. And she's putting them on a plate for me to sketch. So now I'm kind of visualizing the size and placement of the green cabbage dish, and now I'm drawing the outline. Starting from the left hand side all the way to the right hand side, the contour, and then now drawing the rim. Okay, so after that, I'm kind of visualizing the placement of the peppers. This is the first one, and it's kind of like on top, not being covered by other peppers, and then adding another one beside it. And then there's another one covering it, so try to kind of visualize the relationship first before I draw. And I also kind of visualize the sides first before I start drawing. So because I don't draw with a pencil first, um, there's actually a tiny bit of inaccuracy here in the pen drawing, and I don't really stress too much about the minor. Inaccuracies. There's, I think, there's a, just a bit of slight difference between the sizes of my drawing and the real life, but the overall proportion is correct. So all of these peppers are having the same size. So after drawing a couple of them, I'm pretty sure about the size of the rest of the peppers. So just keep building one after another. There are a lot of overlappings, and so that's why I'm slowing down a bit. And now I'm drawing the folds on the surface of the peppers, and keep adding the stems and the body of the peppers. So a lot of parts of these peppers' surfaces are actually sinking down a bit. So I'm using broken lines and hatching marks to show the feel. Very quick, short hatching lines, and then keep drawing more pepper outlines along the way. I'm also using many layers of black lines to darken the gaps between the peppers, so the pile looks like it has more density. So one of the tricky part about drawing this pile of peppers is that they are all in different positions, and some are being foreshortened. And so they don't look all the same because they're all in different angles. Some might look more chubbier because of the angle that they're placed. So we really have to trust what we see instead of what we assume what they should be. And keep adding more broken lines to show the 3D form of these peppers and some small hatching lines. So for me, I like to use hatching lines to show the three dimension of the objects that I see, but I don't do it too much. I like to use paint to show the quality of the colors and light and shade. And、um, adding way too much hatching hatching marks might be、um, taking too much time. And I think adding too much hatching marks might be、um, a bit messy. So I just add a little bit. Just a little bit, and it's good enough to show the three dimension, the form of the surface, and that's it. And now I'm adding these veins on this cabbage ceramic dish. I think this cabbage dish is vintage, and we got it from a friend some years ago. We think that this design is really unique, and I think it's handcrafted. So we just decided to keep it. 
Okay, so now I'm ready to paint with watercolors. So I'm wetting the overall pile of peppers with clear water by squeezing my water brush a little bit. The first layer is kind of like an underpainting. It's not the real color that we see on the surface, but the lightest tone that I feel. It's kind of like an orange red color. As you can see, I'm leaving some tiny streaks of white to show the white highlight. These peppers are very shiny. And so they have a lot of thin white highlight streaks. Just take it really easy for this first layer. The only important point is to keep the highlights and not painting them in. And now I want to paint the ceramic dish. I wetted the area first so the paint can spread out easily. It's a very light watery layer of green. Just adding a little bit tip for the pepper over there that I missed drying. And now grabbing some breathing green and wet on wet to create a soft effect of a gradient of two kinds of greens. Okay, now as I paint the ceramic dish, the pepper, the peppers are almost dried, so now I'm adding a second layer for them. It's a more intense magenta red mixing with a little bit of orange. Again, saving those tiny highlight streaks white. It's really important to wait for the first layer to dry a little bit before adding the second layer. So the color can stay fresh and strong instead of fading with water. This is almost wet on dry. And it takes a little bit of patience to finish painting these peppers This is a pretty straightforward process. We don't have to use a ton of colors to be able to paint a good picture. So far, I'm using very limited colors. Okay, so now I'm just grabbing some light green to paint the little stamps. Here and there. Grabbing some verdin green for some darker areas of the stem, so there's more interest. Pushing very gently with my brush because those areas are very small. And adding this more intense layer, the third layer for this ceramic dish. To give it more contrast and to help the peppers stand out even more with this strong green. Mixing in a little bit of magenta red into the green to create a shade color for the green around the edges. Green and red are complementary colors on the color wheel, and when they're next to each other, they're strengthening each other. And now I'm mixing a tiny bit of green into the original magenta red to paint the shade areas of the hot peppers as I observe. And I'm being aware, not adding way too much shade color because I wanna keep these peppers fresh with the original magenta red color. So just a bit of shade here and there, and balance it, not adding way too much. Yet still give the three dimension for the peppers. And now I just wetted the edge of the plate and ready to paint the shadow. It's just a mix of ultramarine blue and purple. 
very watery for the first layer and wet on wet, darker around the bottom of the plate. And let it blend. And that's it. And here's the look of the uh, finished spread of my art journal. So as you can see, I sketched three views from different windows in my home very quickly. Each sketch took about just 10 minutes. And I also sketched my cute little teddy bear. Um, so I was kind of recovering from the side effects of the second dose of the COVID-19 vaccination. I felt much better after three days of rest and slowing down in life. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you like my video, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. And I will see you very soon next time. Have a great day. So these days I try to get up earlier and have a cup of tea and bagel with ham. After eating, I will go upstairs and work on my thesis. Okay, so here is my messy reading room table where I type my thesis every day. Recently, I've been working much more intensely to finish up my thesis before I send it to my professor. So here I have lots of printed articles and books to relate to my own thinking. So when writing a thesis, it's really important to not just write about our own thinkings, but to relate it with other academic thoughts.